Okay, what we're looking at here is the Nile Delta, our lower Egypt. Uh, upper Egypt is farther up the Nile, and therefore you have the upper, and then here's the lower. So it seems always upside down, but note that it's below the, the uh, hemisphere, uh, the equator, and therefore it's running this way. And uh, most waterways try to come to the center of it. Um, geographically, let's look at this area before I start to show you this information here. Now you have the Red Sea that comes in here and then it gets pinched off and the Suez Canal runs up through here. You have the Persian Gulf out here and this right here led up and you can see the remnants of an old river that leads up and this actually leads up to uh, the River Jordan and uh, the Sea of Galilee and up through there and at one time these mountains here used to get enough rainfall that would run off into them that would keep these things alive and working and they would in fact flood themselves sometimes uh, it's hard to believe now with the amount of annual rainfall that's in this area but uh, the world has changed a lot in the past you know five six thousand years um, from what it used to be the desert out here to the left used to actually be uh, more of a wasteland a scrubland and uh, had uh, swamp areas even entrapped in the middle of it so it was quite different than it looks today um, one thing that you can always uh, see, this is a NOAA photograph here, or a uh, satellite photo. One thing that you can always denote is the green area, of course, and the Nile is only, you know, one-fifth the wide, the width of this line coming through here. And it's indeed a lot smaller today than it was by them having the dam up north now, or uh, south now, that they have of it, that they control it a lot more. And uh, I've got a few ideas here I'll get into about what they should do with something like that. Of course, like I'm, do, I'm the one to change the world, right? But uh, anyhow, this delta here, you can see how fertile it is because they're able to split the water coming out of here and then run off little canals and little water off of that and get everything to where there's a lot of water. And the problem out here is indeed there's no water. And uh, you can see some little farming that's going on here. And I don't know if you can kind of tell in the picture, but there's some blackening areas that are in here. And once you get over to this area, you see below it, and there's a lot of darkness. You see there's a lot of darkness under that, a little more gray and black. Well, this whole area over here has it too. In fact, this whole area right here that I'm kind of outlining right now used to get totally flooded along with the Nile flood valley, and this entire area could become fertile. And it's just how much of it they wanted or needed to farm. And they could farm both sides of it for a while. But there's a mountain range that runs through back here and it kind of stops. And when this place used to super flood, it would flood and then run back in here and cause the Suez Canal effect. Uh, that silted up in, t in uh, more recent times and had to be re-dug back out and things like that. Uh, just too much sand and silt settling all in. And indeed, all this sand makes you wonder where all this sand comes from. And... How many mountains eroded away to nothing to create the sand that you see today and the millions of tons of it that you see? You can even see these wisps here that are trapped in this picture showing it's got a pretty good high detail. But one thing to note in this area here that you see is uh, this one area that's turned all green here. And indeed what they've done is run a canal. You can see that little line there. And run a canal into there and take it off of the Nile and fertilize this one area. And I think what they ought to do is start doing a whole lot more of that branching off in places, you know, on both sides of it, just, you know, little shoots, kind of like they did in Sumeria in the old days. You know, Inky's old way of, of doing things seemed to work fantastic for them because they had somewhat of a controllable flood. Now, the problem with them is that that area, whenever it did totally flood, flooded out the entire area, and because, uh, you know, there was nowhere to go. It, it killed off a lot of people, and there's your biblical type of flood that had happened in Sumeria. Um, but here we're looking at um, the ability for it to, to change a little bit. Now let's go in on this and take a look at what they're doing off this one area here that's a little bit east in the edge of Egypt, and they had an idea of putting a radial tower up here then they're going to run it off these uh, wind props. You can see how big that is as a wind prop type thing. And then the, what they're going to do is run the uh, thing off its own type of power stations. So that's it's self-sufficient in, in a lot of ways. And with that self-sufficiency, it's going to really help them to uh, 
promote this, you know, to where it's a, it's not really a one-time buy-in, but at least it's a self-sufficient type of thing, and it doesn't require a whole lot more um, than that. Maintenance and jobs, though, come out of this, too, but you can see this is going to be like a giant radio tower, and off this radio tower, they're going to desalinate this water with these desalination plants that run off their own power, okay? And they're going to run wires off all these things down to the ground and create a web network that they can run off of. And then what's neat about each one of these areas is what they're going to fuel is something that's going to be very lush below it. And what we need to redo is to recapture the areas that would have been mangroves. Indeed, in like Florida and places like that, you can see mangroves is what are real important. It's what attaches the ocean to the land and the fertile-like area. So you can do that in one area, and then you can start doing it in multiple spots all around through this peninsula, right? You can see it's got a round effect onto it, too. It looks like a crater strike, but you spread and branch that out through all of these areas, and you can see what it really brings out. And then in the foreground now, you can see what like a mother hub would look like. And you can build big canals that run into these things to help them with their plants. Like you can see the blinking here that's going on, which would be canals running in on them. And attach those canals. And then, so they're almost like little germariums, you know. Like saying, if we were on the moon and we were making domes, little biodomes. Well, you don't have to do that in all here. What you, all, you really have to do is make these little things. Well, you call them little things, but each one of these little bitty green dots up here is one and a half football fields in radius in big circles you've seen these before if you've been taking any plane flights and stuff across the southwest you've seen a lot of these circles out here across the ground and it's where they're pumping in and they're fueling they're not fueling but they're they're feeding the ground and getting water out of it because indeed it's a fertile area it's just been taken over it and lost now what truly is lost in this area is the forestation and the vegetation that would hold on to the land. Hopefully off of doing this about a thousand times now and then in modern times in Oklahoma finding the Dust Bowl area where we took down all the vegetation to the point that it ate it away. Much like what's happening to Haiti now whenever they've taken all the vegetation off the, the island just to cook and do things and now they've got it to where it's causing giant mudslides and problems for them. Any time that it does rain or flood, it becomes biblical to them. And it indeed did to all of these people in these areas, and yet these people still live in these areas. Now, um, there's already an infrastructure under here of rivers that could indeed be, after this gets going, refueled again. And so once you get those refueled again with their own water and stuff, you know, you can see one running right up here that runs all the way down to the Mediterranean. So once these get redone, um, then that fuels that area and it continues and continues and continues. And uh, geographically, we can look at the areas that would be most potent and the areas that would be most uh, attachable and make strings through here. And what we really need to do is vegetate the desert. Now, with an area this size right here that we're looking at right now, it would do all of Egypt. It would really actually feed everything, all of in Egypt. Now, looking at this would feed all of North Africa. And all we're really looking at, again here, is something off the, off the Nile. Now, when you look at something like this, these giant green rings are now what's known as fertility rings. What we can do is run off of the Nile into these areas and then make fertility rings out of them and turn them into little small bogs that actually have a whole lot of uh, trees and plants in them and vegetation and so on like that but this also will allow you to have cattle wallows and things like that all around into them and indeed that'll self-fertilize them now these bogs can be flooded every once in a while along with the Nile because what we would do is start controlling the Nile where we would hold back the water and then pulse it out every once in a while to keep this fertile and also to run out to everybody's things during their fertility seasons as much as we could attain and do and we could even find a better way to feed that 
off of Victoria and things back. And during a modern day, there's a lot of things that mankind could do that we're not doing. Let's just put it that way. So you can see that you can reclaim a land that's about that large. And so you can see how huge this project is that we were talking about here that's in the green. But now you look at how you could hub this area and hub this area and all the way through here across North Africa and really start to retake this land back from where it would have been. Uh, this could run into here and you could make a canal that runs off and starts this reverse hub network and this feeds this way and desalinization feeds this way and they work together and form all of this and you can see the areas would slowly reclaim and turn back green again just that simply and I think it's a great idea <coughs> you could see something like this going on you could see it running off of the end of this and regreening through here trying to find a way to refeed this lake right here and use it for a giant reservoir and then do this whole area here that leads up into Jerusalem and indeed this is Palestine and places that are really having somewhat of a trouble now and you could literally turn some oases each one of these little little bitty green dots these little little bitty green dots are as good as any of the nice oases of old you know so if we take that into account and you say how many oases can we build you know and start working on something like this and revegetate it if we were to take this same concept and run it straight across from here up and around over and into Sumeria right in Iraq in that area there and like a big hoop again try to project it over towards India India back this way feeding off primordial rivers from way up you know if you were to make a pipeline type setup that you could feed off of somewhat right and you can't deplenish the lakes that are there but you can work off of things you can desalinate salt water and do these type of things here you might even be able you know the ground table water here is really uh, 30 foot below ground and so well it used to be almost right there the, literally there were places that got wet and there was quicksand and things like that in a lot of areas here but it's slowly gone you know 10 15 20 25 30 foot there's places it's 30 foot out here a lot of places it gets 40 50 60 foot before you can find groundwater and but you can build you a um a hundred foot deep well and then start feeding off of that in these areas now each one little well that say would be run off solar and wind power would run one of these circles that's here right and so it could pump and do and perhaps it would be able to do a little more than itself once you got that area saturated and it could bleed to do two and maybe every other one has a major power station on it and so to do this whole cross area here all you really need is 10 power stations running that are running again off of natural power and uh, see if we can't get this to actually revegetate this area you know you reclaim the Mediterranean a little bit and you work your way that way now of course big sandstorm can come in and ruin everything but if we can get out in this area and make a few little pilot areas and find the oases and find the low groundwater and pump and make a few that are out here that really are only made to put a bunch of trees you know at one time people this used to have a Leban, uh, a white Lebanese cedar forest uh, not necessarily here but up through here and up through Lebanon and all the way up through there was all a white cedar forest that's all gone now and again that's why I'm saying it's deforested like Dust Bowl Oklahoma was at one time and so um, it would change the ecology of perhaps the planet if we were to reclaim these areas that it looks like you know primordial man fed off of these areas coming out of the last ice age and the vegetation is now grown nor north and south but at one time we fed off of this area and we fed off this area so bad and then it started becoming real hot and becoming somewhat of a desert and then in that fact it's actually become now a wasteland 
and it uh, is one of the more fertile places on the earth and uh, something that can grow foods year round for the world and this area that you see right now in front of you here could feed all of North Africa all of Egypt all the way through Israel all by itself in fact it would be shipping out foods it would it would surely dominate on certain things like potatoes that they've already got started there and things like that so it would be growing potatoes and tomatoes and things like that and sending them out to places they would be sending things back to here that they grow and so on but it could reclaim the giant fig trees of old the giant date palms of old and things and it could turn it back into a land that we all used to see in photographs and think of in olden times that really seems to be somewhat lost now. Anyhow, like, share, and subscribe. Enjoy.